I just want to break down every step, step by step, of how I'm practicing calling him back to come to me. Um, I'm usually holding, let's say I'm always holding the leash in my left hand with the, the handle, just with my hand through the handle. That way you can never drop it. It's just hanging there and you can grab it like this. There's no way that he can get away from you. So just put it around your wrist like that. And in your right hand is your little reward. We're using this natural balance sausage. When I'm practicing calling him to come to me, I always wait until at least he's looking away from me because that's a real life situation. He's not gonna be staring at me lovingly when I call him to me He's gonna or you. He's gonna be moving away from you, maybe trying to get something on the ground you don't want him to get or jumping on an elderly person or who knows, or an, a little kid, maybe he's getting too out of control and you want him to come back to you. So you wanna practice with him hearing that command and breaking away and coming back to you. So that's why we always wait till he looks away. Left hand leash, right hand reward. Make sure that you make a fist because right now there are treats in here, but very soon you will be phasing the food out and he won't know why he loves to come to this target, even though it's gonna be empty most of the time, he just will. And then every once in a while, when you have a treat, give it to him, he'll hit the lottery, but still, he's gonna feel good about coming to this. If you call him to a half open hand or something like that, he's gonna see when you start phasing out the treats, there's nothing in there. So call him to this target fist, always, whether you have treats or not. Come, see how I'm backing away? Good, his nose touched my fist, I open it, he got the reward, I said good, and I grab the leash. All at the same time, and I step into him, and I can say sit. That's how you get him back on the clock. And, I, and you could release him again if you want, or you could walk with him, or do whatever you wanted, but call him back onto the clock, that's exactly how to do it, back into work mode, have him sit, and then do whatever you're going to do from there. Go, release him again, I'm going to do it one more time. Notice I backed away. I'm kind of, I kind of pushed him out there so he'd be a little bit farther away. Sometimes when you're practicing this, um, he won't, he's hanging out around you and this will happen to you. The more training you do, he's going to be hanging out around you more like this, all just happy to hang out with you and looking up at you. So you have to create your own distractions. So I've got a couple of pieces of this natural balance. One piece I'm going to toss, hey, hey buddy, look, as a distraction. Go, now I can call him away from it, come. And see how I'm backing away? Good. Same thing happened. Step into him. Sit. Do it again. Go. So I'm going to have to toss a reward because if I don't, there's no distractions here in the yard. So he's going to keep staring at me. Hey, look at this. One more time. Go and do that thing. Go and then say, come. See how uh, if I back away? I'm just going to be dramatic. If I back away, good. He's drawn to me. The leash is always loose. I'm not pulling him to me. He's actually drawn to me just from the body language. I didn't even say the word. See how this works? And there's no treat in here either. Good. When there's no food later on, that's what you're going to do. He's going to come to you. There's not going to be any food, but you're going to say good and pet him and love him up. He's not even going to notice that he didn't get a treat. So we're practicing with a six foot leash now. Make sure that you're very comfortable and you're being very successful with a six foot leash. But then after that, you can get a long line, a 20 foot long line and practice in your yard. You have long places where you can practice calling him back to come to you with a 20 foot leash, which would be a great thing to practice, long distance recalls. The leash is just in case he ignores you the first time. Let's say I said, I said come and he ignored me. You never repeat it. You do a little prompt like that. See that? It's just like, Good. It's just like a signal that makes him turn around. He sees you backing away with the target, he's going to come to you. All he knows is he heard the, the command once and he ended up coming to you. And so that's what he's going to start doing. So that's why we have a leash. And when you're practicing with a longer leash, it's the same concept. He's across the yard. You say, come. You don't even have to say his name. Just say, come. And he ignores you. Give it a little pop with the long leash. He's gonna turn around, see you backing away like this. He's not gonna help, be able to help himself. He's just gonna be drawn to you. Good boy. So, it's so much body language as you can see, but you'd wanna say the command because that's gonna, what's gonna make him turn around and look at you. And if not, the leash, the, the, uh, the little prompt. But he'll keep getting better and better if you practice this way. Come on, buddy.